Hello Raptors, uh, my name is Miss Matthews and today we are going to take a look at some of the anti-Semitic legislation that was passed in the Third Reich uh, early on uh, and this legislation uh, leads to the Holocaust. Um, and so we are going to take a look at some of that legislation and trace how it directly impacts um, the Holocaust. So some of the key terms that you're going to want to look for in this video are anti-Semitism, Mischling, Aryan, and Nuremberg laws. Those key terms will be highlighted in purple throughout this presentation. So the essential question for this video is, what are the consequences when governments use laws to create in-groups and out-groups in a society? Let's try to keep this question in mind as we work our way through some pieces of anti-Semitic legislation that was passed by Germany in the 1930s. So what exactly is anti-Semitism? Simply put, anti-Semitism is a hostility to, a prejudice, or a discrimination against Jews as a racial or a religious group. Now, keep that idea of Jews as a racial group sort of in the back of your mind. We're going to come back to it shortly. Um, but simply put, anti-Semitism is simply prejudice towards Jews. And this anti-Semitism idea is nothing new in Europe. Um, we see that it has existed in Europe for centuries before um, the rise of fascism and the rise of Adolf Hitler in Germany. And there are a few of those instances of anti-Semitism listed on this slide. Hopefully um, the sort of ring a bell for you. Um, but again, just sort of important to note, anti-Semitism had been around Europe um, long before the rise of the Third Reich. So as soon as the Nazi party comes to power uh, in 1933, they begin to pass legislation that directly impacts the Jewish community, that directly targets the Jewish community. Um, we see in 1933 that there are steps taken to keep Jews from holding certain jobs, um, from holding public office, from having, uh, from seeking employment in the media. Um, we see then in 1934 sort of playing into that anti-Semitic trope of Jews as money lenders. We see that Jews are um, excluded from sort of stock exchanges and stock brokerages. Um, so we see that there are small incremental steps taken by the Nazi party to limit what professions Jews may enter. Um, again, this, these laws aren't huge and sweeping. It is simply identifying and beginning to withhold certain um, rights from the Jewish community. And we'll see uh, in the next year, in 1935, this is sort of the game changer uh, for anti-Semitic legislation. So in 1935, the Nuremberg Laws are passed. And what is interesting about this set of laws is that for the first time, the Third Reich is defining who is considered a Jew. The previous laws passed in 1933 and 1934 only make mention of saying Jews cannot hold certain positions, but it doesn't go that extra step to identify or define who may be considered Jewish. And these Nuremberg laws define a Jew as anyone with three or four Jewish grandparents. And so it begins to reframe Judaism as not only a religion, as most people have thought of it, but also as a race. Um, by saying if you had Jewish grandparents, um, you were considered Jewish, uh, it 
bring it enlarges that Jewish population because you have individuals who have converted away um, from the faith, uh, but who are now considered Jewish. So there were priests and nuns um, who had taken um, sort of these vows um, to uphold Roman Catholicism who are now considered Jewish because their grandparents had been Jewish. Um, so it brings in this idea of Judaism uh, as a race. Um, and it sort of defined your legal status based on who your grandparents were. Uh, we see the introduction of the idea of a mishling, which was the legal term for someone who has both Aryan and Jewish ancestry. So maybe they have one or two Jewish grandparents, so they wouldn't be considered Jewish, but they're also not considered um, fully Aryan. Um, and again, this idea of the Aryan race um, is is used to describe people of sort of an uh, Indo-European heritage. Um, it it was this idea that the um, superior race is purely of Aryan descent and of Aryan blood. Um, so these Nuremberg laws are sort of a game changer because they define who exactly is considered Jewish. So this chart was put out by the Third Reich to help Germans sort of understand this new definition of race put forth by the Nuremberg Laws. We see that um, Aryan Germans are represented by white circles. We see that Jews are represented by black circles. And those who are considered mixed race um, have circles that include both black and white parts. And it's important to know that because of these um, Nuremberg laws, um, that only individuals with full German blood were entitled to full protection of the law. So even though Mischlings were not considered Jewish by definition, they still were considered inferior to full-blooded German Aryans. Um, so this, the Nuremberg Laws changed the definition of race in Germany. So the Nuremberg Laws, in addition to defining um, who is considered a Jew in the Third Reich, also did three other things. Um, first, they stripped Jews of their German citizenship. Second, they forbade marriage between Jews and Germans. And third, uh, Jews were forbidden from displaying the national flag or the Reich flag. So again, not only do we see these laws um, defining who exactly a Jew is, but it is also using that definition to um, take incremental steps of withholding rights and privileges from this community. After the Nuremberg laws are passed, we start to see an uptick in additional pieces of anti-Semitic legislation. A few of those um, are on this slide, things like being prohibited from going to hospitals or having Jewish names removed from war memorials. And so we see that this is a systemic um, process we see that these anti-Semitic laws are only the first step uh, on the road to the Holocaust. Uh, and in the lesson uh, on Tuesday, we are going to take a look at sort of how these laws actually impacted um, Jews uh, during this time. So thank you so much. Uh, for watching. I'm so excited to meet all of you on Tuesday. Have a great long weekend.